Welcome in to the Cleveland Browns Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Matthew Peterson, and we are going to go over the latest news and rumors stemming from Berea today as we get ready for the Browns vs. Bears Week 3 preseason matchup, the last preseason game before all the chips are on the table. And it's real football, and the wins and the losses matter. But before we jump into all the news and notes, quick plug right now. We've got a live stream battle with our Bears channel here at Chat Sports. Now, they're a bit older. They are a bit bigger. But in week one of the preseason, we went almost toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in terms of the total number of viewers for our live watch party. They had the edge on us. Let's beat them this time. If you love the Browns and you are competitive and just want to see the Browns win in whatever capacity it may be, for example, anytime I see a Twitter poll of, like, best fans in the NFL, I don't care who made it. I'm voting for the Browns. Like, that kind of Browns fan, make sure you are tuning in for our live watch party. If you're unable to watch the game, click on this thumbnail right here, and that way, when the Browns versus Bears kick off, you know what to do. So just right here, there's the thumbnail for you. Click on it, and boom. You are locked and loaded with live play-by-play, -play, free streaming, all that good stuff, keeping you in the know for this Browns vs. Bears Week 3 preseason finale. So the first rumor story I want to get to on today's show. Are the starters going to be playing on Saturday? Well, we love to go to our Bernie heads here at the Browns Report, a staple of the show for Bernie heads. We don't give it out very often, but believe one, you can take it to the bank. The starters with a caveat, will be playing against the Bears. Kevin Stefanski talking to the media after practice today. And this has kind of been the plan all along, so that Jacoby Brissett and the starters will play Saturday. Now he kind of quickly backtracked that by going, not necessarily all 22 starters. And thank God, right? Because in my opinion, you don't need to start all 22 guys. Some guys like Jacoby Brissett and Jedrick Wills. Like, I want to see those guys kind of tune up and get ready for regular season football. But I have seen everything I ever need to see from Nick Chubb, from Kareem Hunt, Amari Cooper, Joel Batonio, Miles Garrett, Clowney, Ward, Newsom. All eight of these guys I would sit in this Browns preseason finale. What do you gain by putting them out there for just 15 plays? And if you say, what if it's just one quarter? We saw how quickly things can change for our starters. Nick Harris went down on the second play of the game. So you know what? You don't gain anything by them being out there except maybe a bit of a chemistry development with Jacoby Brissett. But let's be honest. Is there really going to be a throw in week five where we go, dang, wish Jacoby Brissett and Amari Cooper had an extra preseason snap together? No. He's been getting all the reps in practice. That's where it matters most compared to just one series where you could just go three and out and – have an injury happen. Now, speaking of Kevin Stefanski, he did quickly plug a quick Jack Conklin injury update saying he will not be playing Saturday. So if you wanted to see Conklin out there, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. That's fine. He is coming off a patella knee injury. That's scary stuff right there. Happened in November, December. He's going to be progressing. Oh, he says progressing nicely. Hopefully he is online to play week one against the Panthers. Now, just in general, I want to open up the discussion here to you guys watching at home. Do you agree with sitting the starters, right? Just kind of the philosophy that some coaches have, including Stefanski for the most part, of sitting the starters, John Taffers, I like to say, shut it down until week one of the regular season. S for sit or P for play, I'm all for sitting for majority of the starters, right? You don't need to see Miles Garrett play. You don't need to see Nick Chubb play. You know everything you need to know about them. They don't need to be tuned up. They are at the top of their position at the highest league of football. We don't need to see anything from them in preseason. We've got more Browns news and rumors coverage to get to in just a moment. But really quickly, I'm trying to get to 800 followers on Twitter. I've got 28 to go. Please help me reach that goal. Plus, quick benefits of following me on Twitter. I follow you back. I'm not too big of a J for you guys. Plus, not even a, I don't have a blue check mark. You kidding me? I don't think I'm bigger and better than you, and I can't reply and have fun with you guys on Twitter. So follow me at Matthew Petey. That link is in the comments of today's video. Next story: J.C. Treader is he not returning? 
for Bernie Heads right to the point here because you may have already seen the news. If not, J.C. Treader has announced his retirement. Now, when players announce their retirement, sometimes we've seen them walk it back. If, you know, Tom Brady, most recently, he went to a cave for 40 days, and he's like, I hate doing carpool for my kids. I'd rather get hit and sacked by six foot five, 250-pound linemen than hang out with my family for the fall. That's basically my takeaway. But here's what J.C. Treader, he put a long memo out. Here's a couple of the um, excerpts from it. So not the entire thing. In May 2011, I wrote myself a letter. At the time, I was a 250-pound tight end rehabbing from meniscus surgery and deciding what to do with my life. The letter began today, May 7th. It sounds like a Civil War letter. 2011, 2.35 a.m. You, what are we, invading Gettysburg? You decided that you will become a professional athlete. You will get drafted and you will play in the NFL until you want to stop. He would go on to say later in his letter, Today is August 25th, 2020, 8.30 a.m., and I have decided to fulfill the second part of my letter, to stop playing when I wanted to on my own terms. I am proud of what I've accomplished and how far I've come from that night when I made the pledge to myself. I feel like if my 31-year-old self could talk to my 20-year-old self, I could earnestly tell them, tell him that we did it. We did everything we said we'd do and more. So the letter was like a long sort of uh, you know broken up paragraph segment. I wasn't going to read the entire thing and bore you guys. It's on his Twitter. I retweeted it. You can go find it over there. But I didn't find his last paragraph relatively interesting. Let me share with you. My time on the field may be over. But I'm not stepping away from football. I'm looking forward to doubling down on my work as NFL PA president and pushing for more progress on behalf of the great players of our game, past, present, and future. Interesting, because I'm in the belief of the reason why J.C. Treader is not on an NFL roster is because he is the NFL PA president. And he has made some movement and progress and decisions it has not sat well with owners, GMs, and coaches. I mean, remember just last offseason, he was leading the campaign of, we are not showing up for these voluntary workouts, right? That was his baby. So I don't think it's very far stretched to say J.C. Treader, he might be out there on a bit of a revenge course right now to do everything he can as NFLPA president to make life miserable for owners and force them to actually spend a little bit more money. So sorry to all the billionaires watching. Now, the Vikings ESPN beat reporter had a pretty interesting tweet this morning I thought you guys might want to see. LOL, Treader told SI that he targeted the Vikings as a possible 2022 destination because he grew up rooting for them. But Minnesota never returned our call. If the Vikings ever had a plan B in mind at center behind Garrett Bradbury, it wasn't Treader. Now, my next question is, who is the Vikings GM? I wonder if he knows J.C. Treader. Oh, it's Quezzi Adolfa Mensa. There's got to be something to this, folks. Like, it's, it's not a full-blown conspiracy because at the end of the day, we're talking about the center position of football. It's not the quarterback. It's not going to gain national attention. But, yeah, you could say that GMs and coaches, they were content with having a worse center. And I don't want to hear people go, his knees, dude. Yeah, I get it. But you know what? I saw Jason Peters come back and play last year, left tackle for the Bears, was their best offensive lineman, and was over the age of 40 years old. No. JC at 31 had at least one more season in him. But you know what? I loved what he did for the Cleveland Browns. I think he was one of those pillars of turning the corner. A lot of people just kind of blindly, sort of outside of Cleveland, just go, it was all Baker. No, Baker had a lot of great footsteps to follow. One of those guys, in my opinion, was J.C. Treader. So type 64 in the comment section below to congratulate him on a phenomenal career in the NFL. Wish him the best going forward because I always loved what he did for the Browns. Now we've got more news and rumors to get to in just a moment. But first, check us out over on Rumble. It's another video platform service similar to YouTube. And a really cool feature about Rumble is you can do play in picture. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's say you want to go on Twitter, but also have the video playing in the background. Rumble allows you to do that. So check us out at rumble.com slash Browns Report. That link's in the comments and description of today's show. 
Next segment coming up. Josh Rosen, is he making the roster? Fake news. No. I, I, I don't understand why this story has started to gain legs. I'm sorry, Josh, if you're watching. Thanks for watching, too. But why? I, I, where? How? What? So Josina Anderson tweeted this out last night. And she loves to be cryptic in her tweets. Keep an eye on how things are going with quarterback Josh Rosen in Cleveland. Dot, dot, dot. Is this a murder mystery, Josina? Have you not watched him play? Like, I'm sure she's just reporting what she's hearing. And so, like, she's just doing her job in that regard. But Josh Rosen has sucked. I mean, we can look at his stats from what he's done so far in the preseason. It's not a pretty show. Like, Josh Rosen clearly was overpicked coming out of UCLA, and he is riding that coattail of being the 10th overall pick. So far through two preseason games, he's 13 for 27, 144 yards. Yes, he goes in for the fourth quarter with everyone's backups. He does not have a great cast and crew around him. But don't you think if you were really that good, you would shine going up against the other teams, UDFAs and third stringers? Haven't seen that much. He had a good throw to Javon Wims, for example, last week. But outside of that, like, he has not been putting, you know, a wow factor on here. Now, Mary Kay from the presser today tweeting out, after Brissett starts versus the Bears, Joshua Dobbs will get some playing time, and Josh Rosen is expected to play some too, Stefanski said. So, I'm not really sure what Josina could be referring to here. I really do not believe Josh Rosen makes this 53-man roster. He'll probably be the practice squad quarterback, right? But it's going to most likely be Brissett and then Dobbs. I think if the Browns had any real concerns with who would be backing up Brissett, they would have brought someone in by now. Don't you think? To get more accustomed to the playbook and to the team? Why wait until closer to week one to go, hey, just in case we get one bad play, we've got an inexperienced or a new backup QB that just joined us the other day. No, that doesn't seem like it's actually a very good progression right there. Okay, I want to give a quick shout out to some new subscribers here at the channel. Um, the Pumpkin Smashing, Becky, Gusto, Rui, Austin, Bob, Bill, Goat Talk. Thank you to all of you guys who have already subscribed. If you have not already, I invite you, go ahead, subscribe, and get a shout out like these guys are on a future show. Another quick nugget to get to before we get to the rest of the rumors roundup. Greg Newsom back at practice, an awesome sight to see. He participated during Thursday's practice. Ultimately, this is one of those file it in the cabinet of things you love to see because it's not like we needed to see Greg Newsom so much in the preseason. I just want to make sure he's 100% for week one. Final story to get to, we'll keep it on the defensive side of things here. Miles Garrett and the Joker, are they best friends? We have been polarizing today. Four more Bernie heads. Four Bernie heads. Yeah, they are best friends. I mean, I don't know if it's like Brennan and Dale level, but appears from like everything we can perceive from the media, they are two best friends. I mean, they are just all like one more guy and we can sing the song from Hangover. But Cameron Justice does a great job of covering the team. Tweeted this out with a picture of them taking their press conference together today. They were talking about how they are very spiritual people and philosophical, and they like to talk about theories and kind of, I don't know, I, I don't usually dive into that stuff, but hey, they're really good at football, so it works, it checks out for me. I'm all for it. Now, before we send you guys on your way, over on our community tab earlier this week, I posted this picture, and I said, caption this, best caption, will get a shout out on the show. You guys answer the call. Had a lot of great requests. 99% of them were making fun of Baker. But one of them I thought was a little bit more creative and witty than some of the other ones. Here's what Skull Legend said. When you move schools and your bully follows you. Like, I thought that was kind of funny. Just the fact that you know it, that Miles Garrett and JOK, I don't believe that they hated um, Baker Mayfield. But I definitely think there is something to the whole OBJ saga last year, and how a lot of the team has stuck with Odell Beckham Jr. since he left the Browns, which makes you wonder what really went down in that locker room. For them to say, for us to speculate, hard to say definitively on the outside looking in. 